Hello, this is Neil from iPaintGirls.com. And so I want to I was going to show you how to do that shape before and I am going to show you how to do that, but another thing you can do is you can like import buildings like this one here. And if you go to view uh face style with the textures, it's like really ugly. Mm. So you just want to turn all that off, you know, go to like monochrome, whatever. Then I right I then I selected the model and I right clicked on it and exploded it. That way I can just select the face I want and modify it. So now I can add some you know windows into it by doing that tool there. I would actually duplicate the one I already had there, but I just want to show you know how quick it is to do that. Um, I would actually copy and paste that one down. That way I have the same you know the same rectangle over and over again. But as you can see, you can go ahead and add some cool windows to it and doors down here and add more detail to the model that's not there. Or you can do it all you know when you paint it in. Uh, in Photoshop, so this will just give you a quick base. So like, okay, that's that's what it'll look like. That's kind of how it'll be shaded, you know, when it says time of day, by changing the go to windows and then shadows, change the time of day. Like, oh, what it, what it will, what will it look like, you know, when it's whatever time of day. Let's say that time of day, then you'll know. And um, also, you have you know view your shadows. I have them turned on right now. Right. So how to do that uh, shape? Then it's really easy. Go ahead and get rid of all of that really quick. Just selecting it all and then deleting, and uh, I don't know, it's not letting me delete that for some reason. That's weird. Anyway, so I'll just go to File New. Right, so what you do to, uh, to do that shape is first you'll kind of draw this rectangle here. Make it kind of thick to make it easy to work with that first. Go like that. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this guy in the background by selecting him and hit Delete on my keyboard. Turn it around this way, grab the Arc tool start from the uh, corner, go down to about here, and then pull down like so. Then you have three different faces to work with. I'm going to grab this face, or these faces, I'm going to pull them back until they disappear. Grab my arrow tool, and then I'm going to just delete these lines here. Sorry for the PM popping up. I should probably turn that off. Huh? Now i got emails popping up. Whatever. So that's the shape now. Then I can grab this face over here, and I can pull it out a little bit, and then pull it up. Then I can grab the face again, and I can pull it in. And then I can duplicate that. I can uh, take all this, copy it, make a group out of it, like so. And then I can go to copy and paste, put this here for right now. I want it to be right next to it. I'm going to pull it this way a little bit, and then I can take it the face. Let's say I want I want it on this side. This tool's kind of tricky to learn how to use it like this. You have to pay attention to where the wheel's at. What you know that now it's on this edge here, which means I'll be able to turn it around like that. So it's kind of important to know how to use it. Now I'm going to grab this face here. This way I can. Nope. See that's not what I was thinking. That's uh, pretty much what I had last time. Let me see. I think I need this face. Nope. What face do I need? Oh, that's right. Duh, the top face. Uh, then I can turn it. <laughs> okay, if it'll let me. Turn it around this way. Uh, it's not locking on that particular. Maybe if I hold down the shift key. Nope, it's not locking where I need it. Well, that's a bummer. Anyway, then I can grab it, pull it here. So then you can grab it again, pull this face, just try to, you know, you line it up, you know, it, sometimes it's kind of wonky, you gotta kind of keep changing your angle, messing around with it, grab it from another angle, and then, you know, keep doing that until you get it matched up. Oh, I guess that was, uh, no, see, I don't, I can't tell, let me see here, I gotta look at it from up and down, yeah, see, it's still off a bit. I'm trying to think how I, it looks like, I don't know, maybe it's not off. It looks like it's off to me. You can do also view different perspectives. So like you can do, um, it might be easier to work in a different kind of perspective. So let's say you wanted to work in camera two point perspective. You can go to camera and work in, um, I thought there was a way to work in isometrics, whatever that's called. You can do parallel projection. Let me see here. Where's the other one? Standard views. There it is. ISO. 
So you can you can check out the ISO and work in that. You know, sometimes it might be easier. Let's see here. I'm gonna see if I can. Yeah, I think that was pretty much spot on because otherwise it wouldn't have lined up up and down like that. So. And it looks like like it is. It might be, oh, it's off just a little bit, huh? I think so. Anyway, so it's kind of difficult to uh, do some of that stuff. I should have just worked it a different way until I had it the way I wanted it. But maybe, let's see if that works. Then I'm going to go to View, Camera, Standard Views. I'm going to go to Perspective here actually now. So anyway, there you go. Now I got that shape I want for my corridor. I then duplicate this along a wall, and I would have the beginning of my corridor. Make group, and then I can copy and paste it again. You know, drag it, make sure it's right next to it, and then like that, and then grab the Move tool. Damn it, what the hell? Grab the Move tool and move it this along that red line there and just keep doing that. Make sure as long as it's along that red line, so it's easier for me to put it like that and then grab the Move tool and then move it along the red line. You know, then you can also make sure they're equally spaced apart. Like that. And then you put the the wall behind you and voila you have the beginning of a corridor and then start adding a little more details and like I said you can add the rest of the details in Illustrator or Painter or Photoshop. Another thing you do really cool grab the circle tool let's say you wanted the foundation for a waterfall go like that grab the push pull tool pull up how high you want it go to tools and uh, offset click on the edge and then oh man what the hell just happened it automatically does the edge, so just click until you get and then drag forward and backwards. I'm gonna make it kind of thin. Then I can pull this down, not all the way though, but enough like so. Then I can grab the tools and I can do the offset again. And this time, I can make it like this, and I can pull. Oops. Okay, if I can grab that. And so anyway, as you can see, you got a quick thing. Then go to View, Shadows. You know, you got a, you got a quick base just to look at something for reference. And then you can import that and then draw right on top of it and paint right on top of it for your background. Or you can add more details in Google, Google Sketch until it's what you want it to be. So this is really a time-saving software. Uh, it's very useful for backgrounds. Like I said, you can import all kinds of stuff. You can import buildings, real buildings. Think you just type in any, but just about any building you want, and it's it's on there, and it, they're pretty detailed models. And then you can just add the rest of the details as you're painting it, whatever. But r big time saver. You, know, you want to know what a car looks like from a certain point of view? You can import the car, pistol, props, couches. Just really time saving stuff that you just you know don't have to draw. Now of course the the downfall of this is it won't it won't help you get any better at drawing perspective quicker. But um, you know. If, you, if you're always able to do this, well then who needs that, right? But still, I recommend obviously practicing perspective and doing it. Uh, that way, when you do need to add stuff, you can do it in perspective. Uh, even if you're using one of these bases in Google Sketch, you want to make sure that the details you're adding are in perspective as well. And then you can go grab something huge like a suburb, and then using these tools down here, again, you have to go to View, Toolbars, make sure you choose the ones I have. Grab my walking tool here. I need to turn off the uh, oh shadows isn't on. So now I can uh, you know walk around. Just put the feet in front of the cursor to go forward. Put the feet behind the cursor to go backwards. To the left or right to turn. So you can just kind of walk around the suburb. I wonder if I can go inside the houses. I wonder if they actually design anything. I'm going to zoom in now with my wheel mouse to go through the through the wall. Oh, actually, there is actually somewhat. It's really blank, but there's something in there. Zoom back through. It's kind of like cheating superpowers. So it's kind of you know, kind of cool. You can like get 
you know, different angles. You don't, you, you wouldn't need this whole entire suburb, obviously, for your comic. But let's say you lived one of your characters lived in this house right here, and you wanted to show them walking down the street. And then you can, you know, away from the house, you can then turn around. Let's say you wanted a shot like this and grab the eye tool. You can look around different angles. Let's say I wanted kind of a higher shot. I didn't want to be so close to the ground, like so. And then, you know, something like that. And then I can show them walking over there. Or I can be all zoomed in on them, you know, and low. And I can, like, zoom in on them. And let's say they're, like, right here. And then I could uh, kind of be like this. And that will be, you know, the basis of your background. All right, thank you for watching. Please leave comments. I appreciate it. I just turned on shadows, which took forever, but there they are.